Hello everybody. Welcome to our today's webinar uh, about modeling hydraulic networks in heating and cooling cycles. As you can see below, this is of course how to do it with Thermolib. And my name is Alexander Lavenka and I'm the product manager of Thermolib and I will guide you through the today's presentation. First, maybe for those who are not familiar with Thermolib, what is Thermolib? Thermolib is a toolbox for MATLAB and Simulink and provides you with a set of command fun line functions and a set of blocks to do thermodynamic calculations. The Simulink blocks are focusing on simulation for control. So we focus on the input-output behavior of components and do not go in very detail about transport phenomena or 3D flow simulations. Thermolib supports the way of um, performing model-based design. So you can do real-time simulations, you can compile your models, you can do um, simulation in hardware and loop environments, etc. And Thermolib completes the physical modeling tool chain with the piece of engineering thermodynamics. Now let's jump into the topic. For the today's presentation, we selected two typical flow schemes, which are very often appearing in cooling and heating cycles. And the first one is a very simple system. It's just two volume elements, which are connected with um, a valve or maybe a pump. And the two tanks uh, may contain purely gas or purely liquid or um, may contain two phases. The second typical example is a cycle with branches. So the system might look like this. So there might be uh, a pump which is driving the flow through the complete cycle and somewhere you split to two branches and you have pressure drops on the uh, branches and maybe one of the branches um, goes through a heat exchanger so that would be a typical situation for the temperature control system. So what is so special about these two systems and um, to make a complete webinar about it? The, gen the general problem is that in reality hydraulic networks have an inherent feedback of the pressure information. So if you have in a situation like below that there's a pump and a, you have a downstream, a valve, and you close the valve, somehow the mass flow in the pump will be reduced. How does the pump know about it? The pump knows about it through the pressure information. So there is an inherent feedback of this pressure information. On the other side, we have Simulink. And Simulink is fl signal flow orientated with one-way signals. So what we have in Simulink is these blocks and signals, and they are unidirectional only. And as we have our tool Thermolib is completely based on Simulink, we have to deal with this contradiction. and these two things naturally do not go very well together. So that's why we had to um, have to provide you with a set of methods how to solve that and how to model hydraulic networks in Thermolib. The first method is what we call direct methods. It's actually a pure forward calculation where you give the mass flow at the source. So you just define the mass flow. Second method is pressure feedback. So it's a method with explicitly feeding back pressure feedback information from downstream blocks to upstream blocks and you have an iterative solver in the source, in the tanks or in um, the splitter elements where you split into branches. And there's a third method which is new um, which we call volume flow volume method where you have volume elements which are connected to flow elements. Flow elements might be valves, compressors, pumps, etc. And the flow elements calculate the mass flow based on the pressure drop or the pressure information which sees, uh, which are seen from the volumes. This method is new and will be available in Thermolib 5.2 which is going to be released uh, within the next weeks. Um, so we are happy to announce this today already. First of the direct method. How does it work? So, as I said, in the direct method, it's really you give the mass flow in the source element of the system. So you define the mass flow and 
force it to go through your network. So all downstream elements calculate only the pressure drop or pressure rise resulting from the given flow. It's up to the user to check that the pressure does not go below physical and meaningful limits. So this is something the user has to do. And there are no feedback signals used in Simulink. It's just really from the left to the right, purely forward. Information flow is only one way. Actually, we are not solving the pressure and network equations in this method. We are more or less ignoring them. Okay, let's have a look to how this method looks in, in reality in, with Thermolib. So we go to our uh, Simulink browser in MATLAB, Simulink, and let's create and start from scratch with an empty system. First thing you uh, always need is a model setup log. That's for all Thermolib models, as you know, probably. And then for a very simple system, you probably use source blocks from this source section. For here, we choose a mixture source. And now let's work with a system where we add um, a refrigerant. We want to work with R134A and for now we can delete the other substances, we do not need them. So in this model we will work only with water and uh, R134A. So I maybe want to see uh, what is coming out of the source block. Um, we need a flow display block from the sink section and now Let's configure this mixture source. We define it to be a 10 bar flow of R134. Okay. And if we run the simulation, you see the properties 300 Kelvin, 10 bar, and we have completely R140, 134. So for now, the entropy and entropy information are not so important for us, so we will skip that. Instead, we will show the vapor fraction to see what is the vapor state of this refrigerant. And if you now want to model a hydraulic network, you probably have something like a valve with simple pressure drop. So we go to the component hydraulic section and choose a valve and then you can use this flow as input for your valve. <clears throat> At the output of the valve, you can visualize the current state. And now the valve, in the, for the direct method, you choose here a valve type, and you have options between to choose between passive and active modes. And for now, you, uh, for the direct method, you choose always a passive mode. Um, for here, we choose a passive mode with the key V method. and we choose a key V value which should be like this. So what do we need again? Need uh, else do we need? Uh, we need the position of the valve. So we need source from the link and we define the position to be at 90% closed. And if you run the simulation, you see that from the 10 bar, uh, the pressure is dropping a little bit, so we have 9.8 bar at the outlet of the valve, but still the vapor fraction x value here is zero, so we have still all is liquid. <clears throat> 